invest in generation, they didn't invest in uh, transmission or, or distribution. They didn't even maintain uh, what they had. Uh, the conclusion at the time, during Obasanjo's time, was that we needed to, um, to reform the sector and uh, allow uh, private sector to begin to come in because the government management of the sector just wasn't going to, to do anything. Minister, uh, if you don't mind me just jumping in there quickly, you have countries like Ghana, uh, countries like Benin Republic, uh, I mean, countries in West Africa that also have the same monopoly over electricity are doing well. Do you think it's an issue of monopoly or issue of mismanagement, waste, and corruption? I mean, let's, let's face it. It's an issue of all, all of these, because if you're mismanaging and you have monopoly, then you, you essentially strangle life out of uh, the, the production system. It just uh, it wasn't working. There was corruption, corruption, mismanagement, all manner of things going on. And uh, the, the first thing that we came to, we, we are doing here, is to, is to say the truth. It's, uh, it's like uh, if somebody is an alcoholic and uh, doesn't acknowledge that he's an alcoholic, uh, he's never going to get um, uh, cured. So we have come to see that the sector is deeply corrupt. We have come to acknowledge that uh, there's mismanagement. We've come to acknowledge that the government doesn't have enough resources to solve the problem and that we need to, uh, we can only solve the problem by opening up and allowing private sector participation, allowing uh, international investors participation and Nigerian investors participation. And that is what, but it requires a real process so an act was made in 2005, which is called Electricity Power Sector Reform Act of 2005. And this act essentially set out uh, the way this thing was going to work uh, by, that will allow the, the bringing in of a private uh, sector. The, uh, in, in doing that, uh, a, a regulator was uh, put in place. Uh, the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission was put in, in place. Uh, to be the uh, middleman, so to say, between investors, government, policymakers, and the consumers. Uh, also, the investment climate at the time uh, wasn't uh, correct because uh, because uh, because PACN uh, or rather NEPA still had the instincts of um, uh, a monopoly. They simply would not allow private sector to come in. So, okay, quick, quickly, sir. Let, let's go back to the issue of admitting that we're alcoholic. There's corruption, mismanagement, and waste in that in in that sector. But how come we are not seeing any NEPA officials, you know, or the people that you must have identified who are involved in destroying this sector? We are not seeing them in handcuffs. We are not seeing EFCC hauling NEPA officials, you know, before the courts to prosecute them for this corruption. You know them, obviously. If you allow the people who destroy the power sector to be running around free, you know, how does that take, how do people take us seriously? How do the even investors who are coming up from outside take us seriously that, you know, we, we are really interested in tackling this problem, uh, Minister? Hmm. Well, <laughs> you know, the, the, you can't even begin to imagine the depth of interest, in, uh, interest groups in the sector. If that's the first thing I did, then there is no way I can go anywhere. Hmm. There's no way I can actually move the sector forward. I think the most important thing is to say that we need to wrestle the sector out of government hands. Okay, I am I am minister, uh, but I do I want to get to the point where we are not awarding contracts for distribution projects. We are not awarding contracts for generation projects, and we are very close to it. This is why not just merely the privatization, because privatization of the generation companies is just a small thing. Uh, it's not uh, the, 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 the government uh, uh, power plants only generate about 2,500 megawatts now in comparison to uh, what uh, is totally generated in the system. So the private sector is actually gradually taking over. But the distribution companies will want to take and, and, uh, and privatize. Yeah. by privatizing distribution companies, it becomes possible for us to have cost, uh, we, we're able to have um, uh, credit-worthy entities buying power from 
uh, invest uh, from uh, power companies. This is very, very critical that we have credit worthy of takers of power. So I, I like to concentrate on that than going back to go to arrest people and, uh, and uh, prosecute them. Many I mean, for example, the reason why I ask that question is that there have been a lot of questions about even the guys who import generators in the country as being so powerful that they don't even want uh, the electricity company that you're talking about to work. How much, how much power do you even have to be distributed? Do you have enough power to be distributed by even credit-worthy companies? Let's, let's face it. That is the point. Now, yeah. now you're getting to the point. Yes. We, one, we don't have enough power yet to distribute. Okay. Two, you do have interest groups, and I can tell you just a few of them. I won't go into all of them, but you've named one. Okay, You also have uh, suppliers of the fuel. You also have uh, uh, those who are inside government awarding contracts that wouldn't want the thing to change. You want people who are in the power companies, that is the the government power companies, like distribution companies, that are, are corrupt, and uh, those who are award contracts, and even those who are uh, who are uh, in the streets collecting revenues that don't uh, report the revenues to government, uh, to, to the government coffers. So you can you may even find somebody who would uh, have a new territory. They have maybe an estate, and they would just go and uh, cover that estate as their own enclave, they connect the place and the uh, electricity goes to these people and they're collecting revenue and the revenue is not going to government. So the corruption is so, so, so big that uh, we just have to cut, cut them out totally. I mean, even, even, is, even is this an admission that government as a central entity that is supposed to regulate police and supervise is not working? Are we not admitting here that even the government does not work, uh, you know? I think uh, I think that's not a good assumption at all because okay. if a government is trying to do what we are doing here, then the government in effect is working. The government recognizes it has uh, there are problems and it's solving the problems. If, if the government was just sitting there and uh, saying, "Oh well, we threw up our arms. This is a very corrupt system. Therefore, we do nothing," then we have um, then we will have uh, uh, we have problem. What I would uh, say is, if government already is taking action, the president said, we are going to hand, uh, hand over generation and distribution to private sector. That is huge. That totally wipes out most of the corruption in the system. Uh, and, uh, and then, of course, we, we have dismissed a number of people. I, I have dismissed a number of people. In fact, I, the, the very month I arrived here as minister, I sacked uh, four uh, chief executive officers of kick of the of, of uh, the eighteen companies, and uh, it set the others uh, straight. But they began to understand we need business here. So uh, we ha we have done quite a lot of things. Even before they used not to discipline staff. Uh, you write a query, the union will just insist that you withdraw the query uh, because they are workers. So, and how, what kind of discipline would you have uh, with that? So a lot of things have been done. More importantly, the international community uh, has recognized the work we've done, and they are coming. Last, uh, uh, in uh, October, the U United States Exim Bank came here and uh, pledged to invest in Nigeria in power sector. To give you the comparison, uh, throughout 2010, the total investment of U.S. Exim in everything in sub-Saharan Africa was 1.4 billion U.S. dollars. But they pledged to invest 1.5 billion U.S. dollars in power sector in Nigeria alone. That it was a very good endorsement of what we are doing and you know they will just not do it. No. Yeah, yeah. Minister, I really I, I appreciate that. But let's let's go back to what we have right now. Uh, for example, during the Obasanjo regime, a lot of people got power uh, sector lines. I mean, power license, licenses to build power plants, including yourself. You you had license to build two power plants in Aba, uh, your own company. What happened to those companies? Why didn't they come on stream? Why didn't they bring power? You know, how is that going to be different this time around? 
Yes. Well, let me start with uh, myself. Go ahead. Uh, we, uh, Geometric Power, when I was chairman of Geometric Power, we, we did get license to build a power plant and also to take, take a distribution network and improve the distribution network and uh, also uh, to build substations and, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, 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 trans uh, um, pipeline. All these things were uh, done. Um, the company, uh, I want to say that by the third quarter of this year, that this uh, the the power uh, this power, whole power project will be commissioned. So that, that, is, that is the one for your company. The one for for, for or for your former company. Uh, my yes, yes. That, that one at least uh, is is set to go. Yeah. The uh, j just like a, a lot of other uh, projects. During the um, many of the projects got stalled for a period, and uh, geometric power, at least because of the quality of, of the design, has been able to come be going to. How long did it take for you to build this? I mean, before you left, how long did it take geometric power to build up to the point now that it will be going well, on stream this year? Well, it was uh, November of two thousand and eight. Uh, so that's that's how long. Um, but um, uh, so this you, is 2012. Imagine, that's okay. four years to to build. Imagine, the, yeah. If you imagine that the, a lot of the government projects uh, have taken almost uh, ten years to yeah. come to fruition uh, here in Nigeria, and that's when the government is actually doing it. Uh, so you will know that uh, uh, that is a real. Uh, uh, progress considering all the, the issues that progress. So let, let, let me ask quickly, so how much of electricity is say your power project, the one you used to have before, geometric power, going to pump into the system? L let's break it down to ordinary people. Will it you be able will, to power the whole of Aba, for example, the city? It will power Aba and Metropolis. Okay. Of Abba. The entire, in fact, the half of Abia State, it should more than satisfy half of Abia State. Okay, and and well, and, and uh, you are saying that on record. I'm putting it on record, yeah. reliably and uh, and uh, or 24 hours, reliably. That's For 24 hours, idea. your projects will be. So, how many of these type of projects do we have in Nigeria at this time that has either reached completion or is about to be completed? Of this structure. Yes, of the type you are talking about, the, the private power plant owners, like yourself. How many of the this type of you like the one you had that is going to come on stream you said soon how many do you think are there and how much power would they inject into the nigerian national grid under the new arrangement there is no none that is structured like this that is more recent there was a project so structured that had been persistent in jos which is a nesco uh, power project that supplied power to jos uh, that is the only other one because you are talking about a full captive power generation uh, uh, environment. Um, we, it's it's uh, it's difficult to to have have it that way um, without having to commit a lot of resources because this project required not taking guarantee of government. Uh, it required just seeing that it can work and going at it. Many people are not prepared to take that kind of uh, risk. Uh, so they, they would just have to ask government for guarantee. And if you're going to ask government for guarantee, then you must put the power on a national grid. It will not be localized power. Yeah, just as we're talking to the minister, as you can imagine, a lot of Nigerians are trying to ask you a question. And I have a question on behalf of one of our uh, uh, tweets here. Uh, which was asking, you are saying that there are corrupt elements collecting uh, uh, tithes and, and, and collecting money on behalf of uh, NEPA or PHCN, and you don't even know whether they pay the money back to you, but yet you have increased electricity tariff now last week to 88%. Are you not just putting more money into the pockets of these criminals who go around collecting money from electricity users? I think that uh, there's a, a miss on... Uh, a, what you need to understand is we are saying that the corruption was so endemic that there needed to be change, reform of the sector, which is what we are doing now. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so we are wiping out 
the, the, the area. I mean, what the, the point is that why don't you wipe so, out the uh, entire corruption uh, first before you uh, increase uh, the... Uh, ask yeah. me a question. Okay. Uh, so let's answer it. Okay. So when you talk about the tariff, yes. you need to understand why tariff is increased in a, in, in a sector like this. In all this time, it's like paying low tariff for nothing, for no power. Yes. Uh, because you cannot, there's no motive, there's no incentive for anybody to come here to invest in power. And there will not be once we continue to, to pay that kind of rate. Yes. So first, first, you cannot pay for power. Power cannot, power producers cannot pay for gas. And therefore, no investment in gas production. Right at this moment, as I speak to you, we have nearly a thousand megawatts of stranded power capacity because of lack of gas. And uh, nobody is, the, the investors in gas are not prepared to invest in gas because they will prefer to sell the gas for, say, LNG or to. So you're saying, hello? They're not. Yeah. They're you're, not saying, saying you're saying that the, the, because there's not enough power now, you have about a thousand megawatts that is not on stream, that is not pumped into the national grid. They cannot, we cannot generate. Yes. The, the machine is available to generate the power. But there's but no gas to run them. You don't have gas to, to uh, fuel it. Okay. So and how many point. megawatts of electricity are you generating as of the time you're speaking with me now, Minister? 4,400 megawatts. You know, as I'm speaking with you, Minister, are you speaking with us directly with electricity or a generator? Well, uh, I believe I'm speaking with uh, electricity. You believe? Are you, are you sure that your house is powered I, by... I uh, but it is PSA. electricity. It's okay. electricity. Okay. Well, Very good to know that. Uh, because we, we see a huge amount of money in the budget every year for even government officials, including the presidency, to buy generators and buy diesel to power them. You know, when are we going to see an end to those uh, kind of uh, weird budgetary allocations? Well, if you were talking about tariff, yes, a key element of that yes. is having cost-reflective tariff, which means, because you see, in Nigeria, uh, uh, the tariff we pay is, is the lowest other than for Zambia in the whole sub-Saharan Africa for electricity. And we're yet, what we want is to move tariff to the middle of sub-Saharan Africa so that we will be able to pay cost reflective. The people who invest in power will be able to recover their investment. It's a normal business. Anybody who is doing business uh, um, wants to make profit. Not just really, you at least recover your profit. Yeah. I mean, recover your, your investment and, of course, make profit. But where a situation where you cannot, uh, where you cannot re recover your uh, investment is just not, um, uh, it's not, not going to work. And more recently, I want to tell you, yes, we did a survey, a national poll of uh, small and medium scale industries in the nation. And the poll came positive that there's improvement. Virtually everybody says that there's, uh, there's improvement. Uh, and uh, this improvement is what we are recording because since we came into, into power, uh, this president came into power, the, uh, the, the improvement has gone from uh, 2,800 megawatts to uh, this 4,400 and still increasing. We expect that there will be a lot more improvement by the end of the year. But it comes. Uh, well, this is so just those are that's just minor improvement uh, in comparison to what needs to be done. Yes. What what, what do you what, what do we need to have Nigeria at least have twenty four hour electricity? How much how how much me megawatts do we need, uh, Minister? The the, the uh, to be sure, we have to do a national demand study, which we are undertaking now, but. We estimate that as at now, you need at least 20 to 30,000 megawatts uh, to have that kind of stability. And we think that in about uh, four years, uh, in about three years' time, we should be able to be getting uh, to the point of, of stability. Every uh, power so minister has been very clear that, you know, we will have power during Obasanjo. They said, by the end of my tenure, 
you know, darkness will be a foregone conclusion. But it's never happened. How much exactly did the Obasanjo regime invest or mismanage or waste into the power sector? Because we've just been throwing fingers around, you know. We're hearing 16 billion, you know, some said it's 30 billion. How much, uh, Minister, did you find out uh, when you got there has been sunk, you know, perhaps stolen by, by the previous regimes before you came? Uh, you know, the Ministry of Power isn't the, the spender of a lot of the money because it gets spent in some other other ways. For example, right now you have National Integrated Power Project, which is which has its own company, uh, and uh, the as far as I know, that uh, company has spent 5.2 billion dollars in, uh, in uh, to to build 10 new power plants and uh, build transmission networks and also to do. Um, uh, some distribution. So the, the projects undertaken by the NIPP, as we call it, uh, are intended to significantly improve power. It's, it's all part of the projects initiated under Obasanjo's government and uh, co continued during... Well, well, how many megawatts would the NIPP bring on board and when is their project going to end? Or is it going to be one of these open-ended projects that just keep going forever? The projects will introduce 4,775 megawatts total okay. into the on completion. We expect that uh, they should all complete by 2014. Some of the projects are already coming in. We may com we may be able to, um, uh, the president may go to commission about three of these projects this year and uh, some therefore next year. The, these projects are, are making very good prog progress in coming to completion. So, they, Minister, uh, what, what other things do you think are there to tell the Nigerian public? As you know, there's a total breakdown of uh, confidence in government. People are hearing you now and said, you know, we hear this every year. Uh, we hear this every, you know, there's always a vision 20-something. Uh, what is going to be different this time around? You know, how... Um, how are you able to curb well, the bad guys you have, you have been talking about all day long? Let me tell you something. Go ahead. Let me tell you, uh, I don't know, uh, I was, I came from U.S. to yeah. here. Yes. Uh, it's a record which I personally have can bring in to bear in this. I would not take this job if I thought, if I thought that we would not be able to solve this problem. And uh, because I just don't do it. I left my own uh, company, uh, which, uh, as you know, invested um, uh, all or that I, I had other people to come to work because I believe that Nigeria needs to have uh, electricity. I would definitely not do it if I thought it wasn't going to be possible. But I think that there is a, I, I agree with you, there's a, uh, a trust deficit between people and, uh, and government, but it is being filled. What is going to be a, a calamity is not believing that anything is going to be possible. That once you are in government, therefore nothing, whatever you say, would just uh, like usual. So I am telling you that we have a plan which people who understand power, like General Electric, General Electric came here. They say because of the plan we have, they are going to partner with us in building 10,000 megawatts of power. This was just a week and a half ago. They came here and announced it. We're developing the MOU for it. This this is a trust. Chairman of General Electric himself came here. It's but Minister, you know that the Chairman of General me. Electric also came before and they brought a, they brought excuse a top me. mind that couldn't even be lifted from the ports. Excuse, excuse me. Yes. Excuse me. Because there is no need to talk if, if you don't listen, if you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm telling you, Chairman of General Electric has never come to Nigeria, ever. Ever. Minister, let me just ask you, and I, I just want to correct you, that the General Electric had a turbine that was waiting in a place that couldn't be lifted during the Obasan, the Yaradua regime. You remember that? If, if what you want to hear is just to pick on things that happened in the past, okay. then there's no way to go into the future. That's what I'm t saying. I am here now talking to you. Yes. You can either believe that this man talking to you is saying something that you can go and check and it's credible, or you can just go and pick on things that you, you feel have, have gone wrong in the past. Okay. Eh? I'm, I want you to, to come with me on a journey. 
Eh? Because this journey is credi a credible one. We, when I came here, what the first thing we did was to go to do a roadmap, a roadmap based on the existing law, which is the Electricity Power Sector Reform Act of 2005. That we want to follow that to complete it. One of the problems in Nigeria is that people start things and they never finish. Okay, implementation is a big problem in Nigeria. You all know it. Yes. So uh, we say we want to develop a credible plan which we will follow to a logical end, and that's what we are doing. And that's why we have this, we, we're getting support from people that never ever thought about coming here to invest. That's what I'm telling you. Yes. Let, 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 let me just ask you this very difficult question, Minister. Don't, don't, don't look at it. If you find that things are not working the way you had planned or the way you want it to be, would you resign? Immediately. Okay. Immediately. Now, we, we, you, know, you know, you are saying this to all Nigerians who are watching this today. I'm saying this to everybody okay. in the world mm. that if, I, if, I, I, if for, the, for this plan that we have made, and you should go and check it on, on, on the website, Yes. Uh, if for this plan that we've made, that if I no longer get the support of my president in going in that plan, and therefore the cabinet, there's no need to sit here. Uh, I will have, I, I will feel at that point that I have other things that I need to be doing that rather than to be doing that. But the president is totally committed to seeing that we achieve success in this sector. There is nothing else that is more important to him. In, in, in terms of all the sectors than electricity. And that's why when you see people come here, we always talk about, about power. And we're making progress. And it, it will not be good to not to recognize that there's actual progress made in power. So to check, you can just call people around the nation and, and ask them, is there any improvement in power? I am calling on people now on Twitter and on Facebook you know, Bart Unaji, professor, asked us to ask you, is there any improvement in power? And we, you definitely will get back to you with the response with that. Minister, we know it's been, you've been very busy and we have... Right, that Nigeria is actually paying for darkness as opposed to paying for light. So we appreciate it. Is there any final thing you want to say to the Nigerian people who are watching you today? Uh, things that they can take you up on in terms of deliverables and dates. You know, you want to say to me that by the end of this year, Lagos will have enough electricity. Or, you know, or Abuja will have enough electricity. Or you have, is there anything you want to say in terms of deliverables and deadlines that we can look up to? I want to tell you that a place like Lagos that used to have rotation power, that as of two weeks ago, I, I directed that Lagos could receive round the clock power. It may, if, if a place is not getting power, it may be because of, say, transformer problem or so, which we are now promptly fixing. But we want to, uh, within a year, to be able to have. Uh, reliable electricity in places like Lagos and Abuja and, and some other places. Uh, we want, as we get more power, to begin to get power adequacy in select cities of the nation, like uh, uh, like Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Kaduna, Onisha, Aba, uh, Port Harcourt. We pick some key industry and uh, cities, Ibado, uh, that should have reliable electricity because that's how you, you, you begin to reduce poverty and, and the urbanization, you know, people moving to the urban areas. Uh, so, and also we are, we are doing a lot to uh, support agriculture uh, so that in, in rural areas uh, you, where you can have irrigation projects to support agriculture, all these things are being integrated. So i like to ask, um, I'd like to thank you for the support that you people are giving us and uh, ask you to, to ask uh, your viewers to have confidence in the, in the power roadmap because it will surely deliver success. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much, Minister. And uh, let me ask one last question before you go, uh, which is here, is that a lot of people uh, are saying that, you know, Batanaji has some kind of political ambition. He wants to be president, and in two years' <laughs> time, he will just run away and uh, start running for office. 
this is what this was all about. Is that is does, does that sound uh, something like sound like something you can be suspected no, of? Definitely not. Okay. Definitely not. I will tell you that what I am running to once I leave this office is running to to go to do more in power because. To the world, we like uh, to. I like to to see uh, see the majority of it, and yeah. I like to be part of it. That's where I'll be running to, not running to any other place. Professor Batunaji, thank you so much for coming on Sara TV. Uh, you know, we we actually appreciate the fact that you have the confidence to come on a show like this, where we ask a lot of hard questions, and we hope you come back. Thank you. I will. Thank you very much. Thank you, our viewers. There has been Professor Batunaji, the man in charge of the power sector in Nigeria, uh, promising uh, that uh, things will be all right. Uh, when we get back to you, we'll be with Dibanj uh, on our show. So do not go away. And after Dibanj, we're going to have a lot of uh, calls discussing what the minister has just said. And if it is true that electricity has improved, don't go away when we come back. The show continues. It's been Sahara TV live from New York City. Assets and Imo said should represent uh, your father and your parents. So I want you from now onwards, I don't care what is your background. Some of you may have come from a poor background. Some of you may have come from home where, where they have nothing. But from now onwards, I want you to announce yourself I'm rich. <laughs> remember that when you grow up and you have your own children, please remember to show love to others. In many years to come now, we don't know where we're going to be. So the future is in your hands. We're the hope of our tomorrow. If we must say we'll be better, it depends on you right now. So that's why I call you your excellencies. You are the excellencies of tomorrow. You are the governors of tomorrow, the ministers of tomorrow. So you must, you must ensure that you behave and carry yourself as great governors and presidents and first ladies of tomorrow. How do Imolites view this gesture by the government of Imo State? Top government functionaries were on hand to pay the students their salaries. The reason for this is to implant in the students the desire to aspire for greatness. Before now, top government functionaries were seen as demigods who wield power and rarely mix up with the masses, let alone school children. But all these are now bygone stories, as the people-loving governor of Imo State had so brought governance very close to the masses. Owale taught various subjects such as economics, English, government and geography to different classes in the school. He interacted freely and genuinely with the students. Surely, Owale is a rare breed. He taught the students with passion and clarity. Who is an economist first to start with? It can be defined as a management of resources that are at, at hand. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you 55%. An economist is that man who uses the minimum resources. That's why it, an economist is somebody who is miserly, not somebody who that has his money. No. But somebody who uses the limited available resources. For instance, as a student, I'm sure you have done what's called scale of relative preference. Yes, yes. sir. Have you done that? Yes, yes sir. sir. That's an economist. An economist is a person who, who is able to set his goals. Because, because the human needs are numerous, while the means of satisfying them are limited. Am I right? Yes, sir. So what do you do? You have to learn how to use that small resources you have to achieve the maximum objective. That's all the economic problem. Anytime you see a governor who is a good governor or a good president is the person who can use these limited resources to achieve what? Maximum. And who is, how do you define economists? All people have defined, including Adam Smith, define economists in terms of specialization. Number two, the act of production, distribution, and exchange of wealth. But the best acceptable definition is the one given by Professor Lionel Robinson, which says economics is a social studies which deals with human behaviors as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses. What do you do? <laughs> what, what it is, it is. And every time that question, that question comes up every year, you ask. Every year it comes up. They change it and it was come out this year. And whenever they ask you what is economics, he said, what you must remember to define that economics is what? One is what? 
So I want to teach you this secret and go with it. You pass and teach others. One is a social science. If you say you want to social science, you have one percent. Two, with this with what? What is this with what? Human behaviors. Three. As a relationship between ants and Relationship between ants and what? Scratch what? Have you seen what I mean by scratch means? Scratch means simply means limited uh, Which have what? All the negative What a privilege. A high point of the exercise in the school was signing of the visitor's book by the governor. This is surely a landmark development in the history of Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Damages. We're coming to you live from New York City. Yes, so. How are you all doing? Good, good. I, I could see that you all survived the Valentine's Day. Yeah. Di different men, they have different opinions mm -hmm. on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. okay. There are those who believe that, you know, they, it's commercialized. It's too commercialized. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forget them. I believe if you're in love with someone, no Boko Haram bomb will be too dangerous for you to Diffuse with your hands. That's right. <laughs> One loser went as far as telling me that each year 280,000 Nigerians are infected with HIV. Whoa. And so what I said? War hasn't ended because men may die in war. Hmm. You know? And then, he's, then, then the man said that 100,000 of those infections occur on Valentine's Day. No. What a, what a loser. <laughs> I wasn't lucky with the ladies when I was growing up. <laughs> but I did not take my anger on Valentine's Day. Yes, sir. I placed my anger squarely on Whitney Houston's feet. You know. She promised me that she will always love me. She promised me. She promised me. But that's okay. That's all right. I'm going to make it anyway. Anyway, some people are crazy. They do crazy stuff about Valentine's Day. Yes, sir. This year was not different. The Sultan of Sokoto sent roses, a dozen roses to Boko Haram. Now, that is a player who wants to stay alive. But a loser like President Jonathan, instead of sending roses, sent a postcard in which he complained that he was tired of hearing bombing stories. The Boko Haram people reaction, the reaction was classic. They wrote back and said, hey, yeah. You should have told us before now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing challenges a relationship like Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It answers the big question, is he into you? <laughs> this year, the measure of who was into who was the new Porsche phone. Okay. Ladies, ladies, if you got the new Porsche phone, it shows that you are the mistress. That's right. Yeah. But if you got with the $100,000 Jeep, then you are the favorite hooker. <laughs> oh, oh yes, oh yes. As our senators just received a brand new $100,000 jeep each. It is their reward for screwing up Nigeria. Why? Like all hookers, they justify their gift by pointing out their ability to bring about a happy ending. Yeah. It wasn't a happy ending for General Muhammadu Buhari. Oh, yeah. No. The other day, he was kicked out of his rented house in Abuja because he could not afford the rent. He has to move his stuff to Kaduna. The, the good thing was that he needed just two Ghana must go back to grab his property. That's it. That's it. That's it. The other people not having a happy ending are Boko Haram suicide bombers. As the SSS tortures some of these uh, leaders of Boko Haram, we are getting a bit of information on the nature of the operation they run. 
it happens that they offer suicide bombers share options. What? Oh yeah, it's, it's sophisticated. The bombers cash their shares in heaven in the form of 72 virgins. These are stupid people. I mean, Olumbo Olumba chief gets twice that number here on earth. On earth, why, why must you die to get 72 virgins? For those not lucky to be selected to be on a suicide mission, they have to make do with widows of the dead suicide bombers. That is like Tokumbo Jeep, yes, get, you know, when, second second, when people are getting the brand new, are getting Tokumbo. In an unrelated story, according to a study published last week, the number of Nigerians living in poverty has increased to 93%. Including me! Taking away the governors, the ministers, local government chairmen, oil importers, government contractors, mm -hmm. general overseers of churches, oh, no. and famous Babalawo. The only other person who is not living in poverty is Aliko Dangote. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cementa. Dangote just opened a $1 billion cement factory. Where? $1 billion. During the opening ceremony, President Jonathan assured Nigerians that from now on, the price of cement will now depend on Dangote's mood that morning. <laughs> in her own speech, the president's wife, Patience, Jonathan, begged the Nigerians to cover Dangote with the blood of Jesus. Despite his fear of women, Two Face Idibia this week proposed to one of his baby mamas. No! Yeah. The music star picked Annie Macaulay of the African Queen fam. No! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The rest of the baby mamas not picked have taken the front row seat of all upcoming Peace Square concerts. Fellow widows! Oh, yeah. They told the Entertainment Weekly newspaper that once Peter or Jude autographs their boobs, their comeback is assured. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, until I read about Peace Queers and their exploits, how women were lining up for them to touch their boobs, I was beginning to think I was a star. But now I know. I, I'm, I'm far from it. Talking about stars, the Zambian national team won the African Cup of Nations. Up Zambia, up Zambia. They defeated the highly rated Ivory Coast team using just homegrown boys. It was a thrill to watch. It was wonderful. However, the group of Zambians who really impressed the world most were not the boys who played for the Zambian team, but the prostitutes who offered free sex in celebration. Oh, yeah. Nigerian government officials were so impressed by the boys, oh no, sorry, I mean the sex, that they sent a special delegation to Zambia to welcome the boys. And the back. Yeah. <laughs> the, guess what? Who led the delegation? Olusegun Obasanjo. <laughs> I hope Nigeria will learn something from this Zambian success story. I don't mean the national team, they are beyond repair. I'm talking about our women of easy virtue. They should learn something from this. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In a recent survey, <laughs> the University of Benin was rated number one university in Nigeria. How? Some are wondering, how, how did that happen? Mm. With all the secret calls and everything. It, was, it happened that it was very easy. The panel had to award the top spots to Univen just to stop Honorable Patrick Obayabon, who represented the university from talking any further. <laughs> in Imo State, Governor Rocha Sokoracha made waves this week when he declared free education for all in Imo State. Damn. He is also giving students free money to go to school. Wow. The move impressed everyone, but not the governor of Gombe State. Sure. The Gombe State governor called a world press conference to warn the Imo State counterpart not to make that mistake. Oh, he said, we offered free education and free money, but guess what, only 17 out of 18,000 students in Gombe State passed WIAC. 17 out of 18,000 students. Now, if you take out my nephew, my niece, and the second cousin's daughter, who have all been evacuated from Gombe State, you actually have 14 out of 18,000. <laughs> Meanwhile, the University of Lagos graduated 8,000 students this week. Yeah. I bet you eight out of them are from Gombe State. Uh. I leave you with this uplifting story. Mm. 
Sports Illustrated just revealed a swimsuit issue. Damn, what oh, is yeah, oh, yeah. Now, here is a model from Nigeria who made it on the cover. What? Yeah. Watch. I've never been to Australia. The location, hello, like sun, beach, you have the rainforest, it's nature at its best. My very first shoot with SI, it can be very intimidating. And here's this, you know, legendary photographer and it's just like, woo, my goodness. But Walter is so warm and kind and he just gave me the direction and the guidance, you know, when I needed it. My first helicopter ride was amazing. When I saw the little island, it looked really small, but as we got closer, it was so perfect. It looked like someone just kind of placed it there. The sand looked soft, and it was soft. It was fun rolling in the sand. The parts of the water, it just looked like it was like glowing green, and the turquoise and the coral reef. I'm like, like this is like that don't exist. All the pictures are just like, that's me? I like these, they're hot. But um, I think the one that really stood out was after the gondola ride in the rainforest against the trees. When I was in the jungle, it, it had like that jungle kind of like feel. I just felt like a warrior princess, like jungle woman in there. It was kind of hot. SI definitely exceeded my expectation. And I'll never forget this experience. If you don't like what you're seeing, you must be a Boko Haram member. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week, that's our show. I diagnose. You hear yourself! Thank you. Hi, welcome back to Hello. Sahara. Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolph Okonkwo. Uh, we've been providing you a very interesting show today. We had the Minister for Power and Still, Professor Bart Naji, who gave an account of what he is doing uh, in that sector. We've also had discussions on the death on life of uh, Whitney Houston. And this segment, we are going to take your calls. We want you to call us and let us know what you are It's been a very interesting week in Nigeria. There's so many uh, issues and so many things in the news. Hopefully, down the road, we are going to have an interview with the governor of Imo State, Governor Rocha Sokorocha, who we expect to talk to us about the uh, free education policy he announced sometime this week. All right, so uh, we have uh, someone on, on Skype. Hello. Hello? Yeah, hi. Tell us your name and where you're calling from and what you want to discuss. My, my, name, my name is Nonso. I'm calling from uh, Abuja, Nigeria. OK, good. Uh, what's going on in Abuja? I saw, I saw, I saw some updates about the prof. He has made many uh, a, a progressive uh, statement about uh, improvement in, uh, of power in Nigeria. But uh, he didn't mention some critical area because right now I'm in Nigeria. I know how it feels. There are some areas in Nigeria that don't have light for over a year now. And the prof is saying there is this and that and it's been uploaded on Sahara. I wonder is it that he's, he's so insensitive to such areas or is just he's trying to cover up just because he's online to get the confidence of the people listening to uh, Sahara, because there are a lot of people that that make Sahara as their own watchword to know whatever is happening around the world. And what I'm what, what are the them. areas? Tell me the areas where they, they've not been power for more than a year. Anyway, the area is not even far from where his office is. In areas like Mararaba, some section in Mararaba, Jukwe, and these areas are in Abuja. Okay. And they've been complaining. 
They will complain as well. I have a friend that lives there and they always complain to me that for the past few months, three months, some we say even a year, that they've been running on generator, not on uh, uh, on power, as in the never light. Okay, it's, it's very good that you are saying this because we, we believe that uh, uh, the professor Bart Niger and his people are watching, so um, they will get the get the information through through you. Um, okay, right. any other thing you want to talk about? How is security no, in Abuja? Do, do you have do you feel secured in the in light of all the things going on in Nigeria? I'm not secured. I'm not secured because the uh, the security agent they are busy securing their compound where their offices are, and they left us, we the civilian, to be at the mercy of whosoever that is coming to attack them. They only secure their offices, their, their, their houses, and wherever they have their what. The normal uh, 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 civilians that are there, that are Nigerians, are left unsecured. They only come whenever there is anything like a bomb blast. You see them uh, mobilizing their men coming to the place after the, the deed is being done. So there's nothing like talking about security. Security is zero. It's only God that is helping us. He's saving us. All right. Thank you for calling us, okay? All right. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Okay. Bye-bye. So um, th th this is a segment where you have your chance to talk about any issue, like the caller now who just spoke to us. He, he may pointed out that despite what the minister was saying, that some areas, some parts of Abuja, they still don't have light, and they've never had light in the last uh, few months. So uh, we, we know that government officials are watching this show. They want to hear from you, just like we want to hear from you. And um, when you call us, tell us what's on your mind. Any topic, you know, you can discuss anything you want. We want to hear about um, what you think about the Boko Haram, which is, um, is still continuing the fight between the government and Boko Haram. Uh, uh, people, we want to hear about uh, the underwear bomber. Uh, any any issue that is of interest to you? It could be something about the government of your your state uh, or wherever you are. Um, so, all right. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. So. My name is Adiola. I'm calling from Finland. Finland. Okay. What do you want to talk about today? What do you want to talk about today? Yeah, I actually called because of what uh, Professor Naji said and that guy who just talked. Okay. About a few months ago, I was uh, um, opportunity to have a Sky, uh, um, Twitter conversation with this professor. Okay. I like the fact that his doors are open, that he welcomes comments from the masses, and the fact that he was able to come to Sahara Reporters today. Okay. However, during that time, he pointed out that Nigeria, we are supplying power to neighboring countries. We don't have enough power in Nigeria ourselves. Why do we have to supply powers to other places when we don't have enough? Okay. It's, a, it's a shocking thing. Okay. That's interesting. And I think they should actually work on this because if we don't have food, we don't have the right to give food to people to eat when we are, we are not yet filled. And I would like to comment also about uh, Governor Okorocha's effort. Actually, at first, when I saw the fact that he was given free education, I was thinking, is it not going to turn out the way it turns out in Lagos? When Fashola built everywhere, everywhere it became beautiful. And then he brought the bills on us. Because now, well, I, I appreciate the fact that he's investing in education and helping uh, the young generation. But is he not going to be, bring back the bills on us in, in multiple folds? That's the question. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because when we get him, hopefully before the end of today's show, we are going to ask him some of those questions and we want to know how sustainable that could be and, and yeah. where he's getting the money, you know. So there are interesting questions we are going to ask him. Any other yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are my comments and my worries for now. Thank okay. you, okay. sir. Thank, thank you so much for calling us. All right. Take care. Okay. So, um, like I said before, the, the minister came on, on our show and presented his positions, and uh, it's your turn now to come and let us know what you think. Do you agree with the plan he has? Do you think that it's going to work? Um, know that you, when you talk to us, you're also talking to people in government, and, and probably some of your suggestions may be adopted uh, um, uh, for the country. Hello. Uh, we can see you. Um, we can hear you. Uh, can you hear me? 
we only see your white teeth. All right. Um, when we get that in order, then you can call us back. Um, so, so there's so many topics, so many issues uh, about things going on in the country. Um, when you call us, please uh, turn on the camera of your computer and um, turn down the volume of your, of your computer so that we can have a conversation without a lot of uh, echoes. Um, we have somebody on Skype. Hello. Yeah, I, can you hear me? You are very, very faint. Can you increase the volume of your either the, the computer or you uh, speak up a little bit? And then turn on the, cam the camera because we can't see you. Uh, tell us where you're calling from and what you want to talk about. I'm calling from Spain, in Command de Mallorca, Spain. Okay. All right. Uh, we still can't see you, but you can keep speaking uh, while, while you figure that out. James, uh, calling from Spain. What, what do you want to talk about? Okay, yeah. I want to talk about this voice subsidy issue. I know it has been going on for quite a time. Okay. Okay. Uh, during the uh, town hall meeting in Lagos, where this um, um, our finance minister, like um, our prime minister, Ngozi Iwela, yeah, she she was giving statistic that Nigeria in one Nigerian citizen is two hundred and twenty barrels of oil per day, right? So I just make a a statistical analysis: two hundred and twenty, like which means a Nigerian citizen is worth two hundred and twenty barrels of oil per day. Barrels? Um, I doubt if, yes. it's, if she said barrels. That, that's, that's a lot, you know, if you're talking about barrels. Are you talking about gallons? I, no, I'm, she, I'm, said, she, she okay. said barrels. Okay. She was, yeah, she said barrels. She said barrels. She okay. said it's a, 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 Kuwait, a, a citizen of Kuwait worth 9,000 barrels. So it was comparing because those ones are smaller country and we are a big population. Okay, okay so I, I just said, okay, since she's only, she said that, not that I quite believe that, she said 220 barrels per day. And oil is being sold average of hundred dollars per day, which means about two thousand, about twenty twenty thousand over twenty thousand dollars per day. Nigerian citizens what over twenty thousand dollars per day, in, and the other and the, which translates into three point five million naira per day, which means Nigerian citizens is worth three point five million naira per day, and Nigeria is being paid just eighteen thousand naira. Okay. Yes, eighteen thousand naira, you know. So the NFC, we know that it's the sort of house, they sort of sold us out. So I just want to allow the world to know about this as Nigerian citizens is worth closely up to four million naira per day okay. on our, our statistics. Okay. All right. Thank and you so thank you so much. Let's take other colours. I, I believe that we, we now know that this, the figures being thrown around during the subsidy uh, debate are, are totally wrong, and we don't know the exact figure, so um, that, that is a given. Hello? Hello? Okay. All right. Um, we, we are having technical difficulty picking up videos for, from, for Skype, so we are going to take a break. When we come back, we take more of your calls about Nigeria and issues of interest to you. So stay tuned. And, and then we are going to try to see if we can get the governor of Imo State too. All right. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the show. My name is Dr. Damages. We're coming to you live from New York City. Yes, sir. How are you all doing? Good, I, I could see that you all survived.